Hello again and welcome to this Boeing 737 video tutorials and this uh, video will continue our discussion about the type of descent in the last video we talked about the FMC and how does the legs page or what is in the legs page affect the type of descent computed by the FMC and in this uh, video we'll be going over how are you as a pilot can do the uh, mental math computation for to figure out your type of descent First as a backup for the FMC and second to cope up with any change that might happen as you do the approach for example a runway change a wind shift it's easier for you to if you are uh, used to do the mental math it's easier for you to cope up with any change because sometimes it might be a little bit tight to reprogram the FMC and wait for the FMC to uh, come up with a new decent path or type of decent there are three items that we need to consider here to figure out the type of descent for the Boeing 737 uh, the uh, first one is the altitude that you need to lose so in our example here we are going to uh, this airport and the field elevation for this airport is about 600 feet and we are cruising at 12,000 so just to make the mental math easier we'll consider it as field elevation of 1,000 so the altitude that we need to lose is 11,000 feet so multiply the altitude by 3 we get 33 nautical miles and the second item that you need to consider is the, your uh, speed for each 10 knots of a speed you need to add 1 mile and you only consider the speed above 200 so here we are cruising at 283 let's say 80 knots so 80 knots divided by 10 that is 8 miles so this is the mileage that you need to add to whatever mileage you got here so it's going to be 33 plus 8 is 41 miles the uh, last thing that you need to consider is the wind and again for each 10 knots of wind is 1 mile if you have a tailwind then you need to add 1 mile for each 10 knots of a tailwind and if you have a headwind then you subtract 1 mile for each 10 knots of headwind and this example here the wind is almost a crosswind so we'll not consider it so the track mass that we need to start our descent is going to be 41 miles and that is track mass let's assume this 22 knots was a tailwind then we'll add 2 knots to the 41 and you'll get 43 track mass so this is basically is the way to, to figure out your top of descent or the track mass that you need to do the descent and that is an idle or continuous descent all the way to the runway uh, of course the, this mileage will account for your slow down to 240 or 250 below 10 and then to slow down to your up speed configuring flaps gear and ideally it will work up to gear down flaps 15 with idle power it's better at the beginning to be slightly below your glide path until you get used to figuring out the type of descent and learn the behavior of the airplane and then you can tweak it further as you go as you gain experience to push the uh, idle power up to flaps 30 so as I mentioned a few times the track mass and not the direct mass to the, to the viewer or to the localizer but the track mass and now I'm gonna show you a chart for the airport and we'll uh, discuss how is that affected when you have a downwind or when you are planning for a downwind approach a pace or a straight end or crosswind so this is the airport chart this is runway 34 here and this is runway 16 and the VR is located here so the VR for this airport is very close to our touchdown for either runway and you can consider this as the distance to your uh, to the runway and that is direct not, not the track miles if the VR was off 5 miles here or 5 miles to the side then you need to consider it it's going to be a little bit different so here is again the runway and this is the runway uh, 3 4 here runway 1 6 here and the VR is located somewhere here let's assume we are coming from here if you are planning to do a downwind then you will approach the runway and join the downwind somewhere here you will go for either 5 or 3 or 4 miles final base and to the runway 
So the distance of the airplane directly to the runway, you need to add to it the downwind base and final. If I am going for a 5 miles final, this is going to be 5, and then depending on how many miles for your base, 4, 5, or 3, and then another 5 miles here. So this additional miles you need to consider to identify your type of descent compared to the VR. So in the example with the calm wind, we said to me 33 plus 8 is 41 miles. Now the 41 miles subtract from it this additional track miles. So here we have 5, let's say plus 5 plus 5, so 15. So 41 minus 15. So if you start your descent from the VR at 36 miles, that will get you in a very good point to do an idle descent, slow down at 10,000 or so to 240, and then as you join the uh, downwind, slow down to up speed, configure the flaps, as you turn base, gear down flaps 15, and then as you turn final flaps 30. Now let's assume that we are coming for runway 16. So if you are coming for runway 16, at uh, one point you join a left base for let's say 5 miles final. And that is almost a straight in approach. So whatever mileage that you got, 41 miles, is the mileage that you need to start your descent from the VR to be able to do the slow down to 240 and then to your up speed, configure and land. The last thing is the uh, if you are coming for a crosswind. So let's assume that you are coming from here. And whether you are going for runway 16 or runway 34, it's going to be the same thing if you are planning to uh, join, a, let's say, a right base here and a left base here. So what do I do is just I add my final. So if I'm going for 5 miles final, this is what I consider. If I am going for 8 or 10 miles, then this is the only DME that, or the only track miles that I'm uh, considering. So just to make it easy for a straight end, use whatever mileage that you got from your uh, altitude that you need to lose and the airplane cruise speed and the wind. If you are coming from a downwind, then you uh, subtract the mileage here. And if you are coming from a crosswind, then you subtract your final mileage only. For me to make it easier for a downwind, if I'm coming for a downwind, I go with 10 miles. So whatever mileage I get from the computation, I just subtract 10 miles. Make the airplane a little bit below the, uh, the glide path, but as I said earlier, it's better to be slightly below than above. And as you get the experience, as you learn the behavior of the airplane, then you can tweak it uh, better and then adjust it as, as you go. So for a straight end, just use the mileage as, as it is. For a downwind, subtract 10 miles. And for a crosswind, if you are going for 5 miles final, just subtract 5 miles. So uh, hopefully that this video was not too complicated. I hope I was clear. And if you have any questions or comments or concerns, uh, please let me know. Okay, so in a future video, I'm going to cover a very important tool here, which is the vertical bearing. Until then, as usual, I wish you safe and happy flying. Thank you for watching.